Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert. Yes, the name has changed. The artist formerly known as Air Users Blog is now called Pro Tools Expert. You can find us at protoolsexpert.com. We're on Twitter, Pro Tools Expert. And we're on Facebook as well. And head over to our site. The old URL is still working for airusersblog.com, but you can get to us, as I say, at pro-tools-expert.com. And uh, the reason we've done that is obviously it makes a lot more sense calling us Pro Tools Expert than it does Air Users Blog. There's some history in it. And if you want to know the history of what it was called the Air Users Blog, then head over to the site and you can find out more. Anyway, one of the things I always try and do with any demo tutorial is get into it quick. So I made the titanium guitar sound that somebody asked me for last week. Then loads of you came back and said, how do you do the reverb part? Okay, always one for a challenge. And of course, we always stick to what we've got in Pro Tools. We don't get any, any external stuff in. So I'm going to show you a way that you can get that kind of effect that David Getter's got on Titanium and have it on your tracks too. Now, the first thing you want is a reverb. So there's a reverb coming in. And if you've not done it before, we'll actually just delete the reverb out that we've already got in there. And we'll go track new stereo auxiliary input and create it. And I'm going to bring that all the way up to under my guitar so we can see what I'm doing. Because it's the guitar that needs it. I'm going to call that verb. And there we are. Now we've got a send already coming from the guitar. Bus 7 and 8. And so I need my input to come into bus 7 and 8. What I can do then is rename that for once so I know it's always there. You see it's now called verb there as well. I just want to make sure it's going to my stereo monitor outputs. And... Now, when I send from here, it will come into the reverb, but now I've actually got to apply a reverb, so I'm going to go to reverb, and go to the air reverb. And now for this, anyone will do, but what you actually really want is you want a lot of reverb time. And let's just put this on, and this on for a second. As you can see, a lot of reverb. Put some ambience in, and push the frequency up a bit here as well. And this is sending it here. Just push that over. So I like that. It's got to be huge, basically. And there's a reason for that, and you'll see in a while. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to record that reverb to an audio track. And... Let me show you. I'm going to go track, new, stereo, audio track, create. That will come into here and we'll call it reverb. And it's already called that because I've already done this and tested it before I actually make the video. Reverb one we'll call it. Now we need to send from here. Instead of stereo monitors now, we'll get a spare. Bus 15 and 16 will do for this experiment. And we need to bring that now into bus 15 and 16. So our input's that. And now this has got to go to my stereo monitors as well. If I put that on, and we take that out of uh, solo mode, you see it's now coming in here. I'm going to record that reverb. I'm going to go back a bit first, and what we want to do is turn that on and off, just so that we get rid of the tail. Here we go. We're just going to record this. It'll sound odd for a while, but you'll see what I'm going to do in a while. That is now recorded as an audio track, so that's a piece of audio now, it's not live reverb. And I'm going to hide and make that inactive because I don't need the real reverb now. And then the next thing you're going to do, this is where it gets cool, because what we're going to do is basically we're going to draw in the volume of this. And we've got to drop down this lane here, so it says volume. And what we want to do first, is if you saw me do that too quick, then I'm going to grab it again. I'm going to pull this down so it's now at minus 105 dB, which means that the fader's all the way down like that. And in the track, it comes in and out. So, go 
close to that bar first. So what you can do is you can mark it, and for, I think I need about half a bar of time. So I'm going to put fourth notes here, and that should be right, quarter notes. And what you then do is you mark it and then pull it up like this. The quickest way to do it is like this, is to mark it like that. Then get the Alt key and delete that one. And now we have a volume ramp, and it does this. And as you can see, we're starting to get... Another one here. Do the same again. And we'll press the Alt key and delete that one out. You could do the pencil tool, but I'm using it with the multi tool because it's just quicker with the smart tool. Now this one's even bigger, so we want this one to start from, start from about here and push in to there and be louder as well. And we delete that out and we get this. we do then is we copy it by marking it and pressing command or control if you're on a Windows machine and D and then you have it like that so the other thing then Actually, before I do the other thing, is what they've also got on. Actually, what you then want to do is bring in your EQ, your seven band EQ. So we go to DigiDesign, in fact, Air, Avid, EQ seven band. There we go. And we need to roll, we just need to shape that reverb. It's quite mid focus like that. And there's not much top end in it either, so it sounds more like this. <laughs> So the one other thing then that's in the track, if you listen, is the good old 1980s reversed cymbal. Dead easy to do. What I'm just going to do is going to delete the fade off that. And I'm, all you need to do is go to Audio Suite, DigiDesign, and you need to go, sorry, it's an Avid these days, into Reverse. So first I'm going to do is reverse it back the other way. So there's audio and go here is the reverse and just go render. So this is what the, this is what the symbol normally sounds like. It's a really deep symbol. All I then do is reverse it and then there it is. And if you listen to the track that's in as well, it, it, what you get in the end is this. If you want to copy that then, if you want to put it through the track again, or in any track, and of course we don't do this because, we, because we're all going to make karaoke versions of, uh, of Titanium, we're actually going to go and use these tricks for our own production, so I can just duplicate that then across the timeline, and now we have some really cool reverb effect under the bottom of this part. <laughs> hot singer to put the vocal in and I'm not even going to try so there we are there's the reverb from titanium and that's my way of getting that kind of effect don't forget you can submit your challenges and your questions to us which is support at airusersblog.com at the moment we'll update that but you can send them as messages through YouTube and we pick them up and then we do make these videos if you make requests and uh, we try our best to fulfill all those requests. Don't forget we have a podcast now, and that's on iTunes, and it's Pro Tools Expert Podcast, Pro Tools Expert Podcast, and we make it on a Monday night, and it's usually ready by the Tuesday, depending on how fast iTunes are getting it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.